Hey guys, Frosted Knives here, and I've got a top 10 list for your drive at five today. Um, for those of you that may be interested, or may already know, in less than one month, on July 15th, uh, the new Weird Al Yankovic album drops to stores. I believe it is his 14th studio album, entitled Mandatory Fun. You can't mandate fun. I don't want to have fun. You can't tell me that I have to have fun. Is this government regulated fun? Uh, so that's the title. No other uh, details coming out except that and the street date. So I thought that uh, since I am a big Weird Al Yankovic fan, I've been following him for many, many, many years, I'm going to give you a top 10 list. I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite Weird Al songs of all times. It doesn't have to be parodies. This is just my favorite top 10 Weird Al Yankovic songs. And it, I compiled the list. Look, okay, I got it on this paper right here. I'm going to read it while I drive. Um, and it was a very hard list to compile because I like them all. I, I mean, there's very few of his songs that I actually don't like. And of the ones that I actually don't like, I still kind of like them. I don't listen to them as much as the other ones that I really like, but I still kind of like them. And there really isn't any that I would... There really isn't any... Sorry about that. There really isn't any that I would say um, I hate. So it was a tough list to compile. But I have it right here. And we're going to run it down. Okay. Starting at number 10. Number... Hey, that's the voice you hear in those countdowns, right? When you when they do countdowns. Number 10. Number 10 is a song off of his fourth studio album entitled Polka Party. And the song is called Dog Eat Dog. It is an original song. And it was uh, uh, styled in the... Uh, it was a style parody written in the style of Talking Heads. And I don't know if a lot of people actually know this song or like this song. I really like this song. And part of the reason that I really like this song is because Weird Al absolutely nails David Byrne's vocal style. Um, this sounds like a talking head song and it's done really, really well. It's written, uh, it, it's, it's a song about a, a lowly office worker who's climbing the rungs of the corporate ladder and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and he does a lot of this similar kind of vocalizations that uh, Byrne does in Talking Head songs, very similar to uh, um, Once in a Lifetime and songs like that. So um, I, I really like it simply because of how well it imitates the source material. And uh, favorite line from the song is... is um, Sometimes I tell myself, this is not my beautiful stapler. Sometimes I tell myself, this is not my beautiful chair. And, you know, if you've ever worked in an office, you have uh, you understand the mundaneness of that line. Moving up, number nine. Number nine. <clears throat> number nine is off of, the, uh, off of the Deep End album, the one where he uh, parodied Nirvana. Tight, last track on off the Deep End album, and it's a song called You Don't Love Me Anymore. Uh, this is a ballad. This was written, an original song, written in the style of the band Extreme. Uh, specifically, their big, big 90s hit, More Than Words. If you know that, you'll be very familiar. So it's a very uh, a lowly, acoustic, uh, very acoustic-y type song, a ballad, where Weird Al is singing from, about a guy who thinks his girlfriend is acting kind of strange, and he's not really sure but he suspects that she doesn't love him anymore. And the song is just absurd uh, because it starts out how he talks about, you know, she, she stops call, returning his phone calls, stop doing this, and it, it goes into some really odd things. Um, and uh, he, he says, I, we've been together for so very long and, and now I'm, I'm starting to think that something's wrong. Um, and he's not sure that something is wrong even after she's had sex with the entire hockey team. And that's the song. 
you don't love me anymore. He's very perplexed and he's thinking that something's wrong and maybe that's it. And I, I just, I absolutely think that song is hilarious and uh, you should uh, you should look it up and listen to him. You should look it up and listen to all of these. All right, next one on the list. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight is the second title, second track off of this it, the album called Even Worse, which came out, uh, his fifth studio album. The song is called Stuck in the Closet with Vanna White. Even Worse was the first album of his that I ever bought. And I listened to it and listened to it and listened to it over and over and over again. Stuck in the Closet with Vanna White is an original song and it's written uh, as sort of a rock uh, rock ballad, rock, not a rock ballad, a rock song, heavy guitars, heavy drums, whatnot. And it's written from the perspective of uh, this guy who has these weird dreams. He's having weird dreams his uh, day after day and night after night. And all of his dreams end the same way. It ends up with him being stuck in a closet with Vanna White. And he's at his psychiatrist trying to figure out why he's having these dreams. And the dreams are absurd. They're more and more absurd. But what really gets me about the song and makes me chuckle is that back when it was written in the 80s, Vanna White was considered a sex symbol. She was in Playboy. She was hot. People liked her. She was on Vanna on, on uh, a Wheel of Fortune. Still is. She was eye candy. And people, I'm sure lots of people fantasized about Vanna White. But in his song, He's talking about all of these things, how he's stuck in the closet with Vanna White, and the one line that always gets me where he says, but Vanna, since you're here, why don't you let me buy a vowel from you? And I, I, I find that so absurd that a man is dreaming about Vanna White being in a tightly enclosed space with her every night, and all he can think about is fucking buying a vowel, being on the damn game show. And that's what makes it ludicrous in my mind. I love that song. Number seven. Number seven is off of the Bad Hair Day album, the final track called The Night Santa Went Crazy. The second of his Christmas themed album uh, songs. And I love this song. This is a song, it's an original song, loosely styled off of, uh, loosely, a loose style parody of a um, soul asylum, specifically Black Gold uh, song. And uh, it's just, here's Santa who's being so jolly and in the song, Santa finally snaps and he goes on a murder rampage and he wastes everybody at the North Pole and he kills all the reindeer and he does stuff, kills off the elves and it's just absurd and it's violent and it's just this juxtaposition of, you know, Santa's supposed to be jolly and he has all this violent crap going on. Um, and there's two versions of it. There's the album version and the extra gory version, which was the single. In the album version, Santa gets arrested and sent to jail for 900 years. In the extra gory version, some one of the guys from the SWAT team shoots Santa in the head. And yes, Virginia, Santa Claus is now dead. Uh, so, uh, great song. It's twisted. If you like black comedy, just twisted, uh, twisted comedy. You'll really love this song. Next song on the list, number six. Number six. Number six from the UHF soundtrack. The biggest ball of twine in Minnesota. This is another original song written inside of like a folk song style, like uh, Gordon Leadfoot or Harry Chapin, just this rambling storytelling style. Uh, well, a very mellow, very acoustic uh, stuff in it. Just a mellow storytelling kind of song about a family who goes, uh, wants to go on vacation, has two week vacation and decides they're gonna take a cross country trip to go see the biggest ball of twine in Minnesota, which actually does exist. And everything in his song that he mentions actually does exist, including Poodle Dog Rock and the Mecca of Albino Squirrels. Look it up, they're there. It's about a six minute song and I really like it. It's just this wonderful storytelling song that's just ludicrous and all these things that happen. And a funny anecdote about the song when my daughter was little, this was the song that I used to sing to her when I was trying to get her to go to sleep. And she would always fall asleep about halfway through and I love Weird Al so much that I didn't care, I kept singing. 
till the song was over. So, uh, biggest ball of twine. Yeah, that's the thing. Number five, number five. The song off of the Alpocalypse album, which was the last album we just released. A song called Craigslist. And that is another style parody, another original song, written in the style of The Doors. And this song is genius. Let me just say that. Not only does Weird Al nail Jim Morrison's vocal vocalizations and his singing style, but they also got Ray Manzer Manzerak to play keyboards, from the doors to play keyboards on this song. So it really gives it that doors feel. And uh, it's an awesome song written about a guy who cruises Craigslist for all kinds of ridiculous things like uh, buying things and getting dates. Um, favorite line from the song, um, you were a blonde half Asian with a bad case of gas. I was wearing red Speedos and a hockey mask. Doesn't that just put an image in your head? Number four, number four. A song called the Poodle Hat Album entitled eBay. Now this is a parody. This is a parody of a Backstreet Boys uh, song. This is a parody of the Backstreet Boys song called I Want It That Way. I want it that way. About a guy who buys lots of useless shit on eBay. And again, Weird Al nails the vocals on this. This is beautifully done, beautifully uh, recreated. And not only does he nail the vocals, he nails the harmony. So he's got this harmony where he's harmon because Weird Al does all of his own vocals on the songs. So he's harmonizing with himself. He plays all of the five uh, vocal parts. And it's just harmonized about eBay beautifully. Uh, go look it up. You'll find lots of homemade videos on it. And it's a wonderful song. Number three. Number three. From the second album called In 3D, this is the theme from Rocky 13, otherwise known as The Rye of the Kaiser. This is a parody of the song by Survivor uh, called Eye of the Tiger. And, uh, you know, of course, we, we used to think back in the day that uh, the Rocky songs were going to go on, Rocky movies were going to go on forever, forever, Rocky 42. And so, um, this is the theme from Rocky Three, um, a parody of Eye of the Tiger. And um, the funny thing about it is, ah, here I am. It's written as a Rocky has been has retired. He can no longer box, and now he's opened up a deli. He's opened up a deli uh, in his own hometown, and instead of serving knuckle sandwiches, he's serving bratwurst. And it's just a genius parody, and I thought it was wonderfully done, wonderfully written, well created, and uh, it's one of my personal favorites of his parodies. And let me just turn the corner here, and we'll go ahead with the rest of it. Uh, number two. Number two. Uh-oh, where's my key? Oh, there's my key. <laughs> Number two, let me just open the gate here. Okay, here we are. I'm actually home. This one took the whole drive home. Number two, my all-time favorite parody of his is a song off of the Straight Outta Linwood album. It's the title track and leading signal single. And the song is called, you may have heard it, the song is called uh, White and Nerdy. And White and Nerdy, oh, all these jackals are in my spot. White and Nerdy is a parody of Chameleon Air's Riding Dirty. And White and Nerdy is uh, wonderfully done. It's a great parody. Uh, it's a great rap because, you know, where Al has to do the rap for this. Here we are. Um, great parody, great rap. Um, Wonderful video. Donnie Hosman's in the video. It's great. It's awesome. Um, my favorite line from the song is um, the only question. You know, the only question I ever thought was hard was, "Do I like Kirk or do I like Picard?" We all we all wonder about that. We all wonder about that. 
Now that comes to the number one. Number one. One. My number one all-time favorite Weird Al song is an original, not a parody. Is it original? It's from the Dare to Be Stupid album. Number three album. Three or four. I think it's this third. And the song is called One More Minute. And it is written in the style of an Elvis 50s doo-wop song. And it's basically a breakup song. It's about this guy who is leaving his, who has left his girlfriend. And the song is all of the things that he would rather do than spend another moment with this girl. And my favorite line, which is actually always makes me laugh out loud when I hear it. My favorite line from this song is, um, I'd rather clean all the bathrooms in Grand Central Station with my tongue then spend one more minute with you. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, that is hatred. Okay, that's my top 10 list. Um, go ahead, comment, discuss, uh, talk about whatever you like to talk about. If you're a Weird Al fan, what are your favorite Weird Al songs? What are your favorite Weird Al videos or Weird Al albums? Um, uh, and if you haven't listened to those songs that I mentioned, I highly recommend you to go on YouTube, look up the videos, look up the songs, You'll probably laugh your balls off. Balls. All right, that's it for another week. I'm home. Have a nice time.